listening. Um, thank you for logging on or coming to watch or whatever. Um, bear with us, this is our first time, um, but we hope it helps. So right now go through foundation for one hour. Um, and we've turned the chat off just to avoid any dodgy comments. So if you've got any questions, you can see here, we've got the Horizon CC Maths um, Twitter or email them to Mr. Russell, okay? And we will get back to you straight away. Okay, so we're gonna be just looking at skills, some basic questions, but if you've got anything that you want to ask, just let us know. Right, so first up, just looking at rounding and estimating. So the first question says, round 162.645, first of all, to one decimal place, okay? So 162.645 to one decimal place. So look at that figure there. Um, and it's either gonna stay as a six or it's going to round to a seven. So I look at the digit afterwards and because that's a four, that tells me that 162.6 will be my answer, okay? Because that's below five. Here it says to two significant figures. So again, I'm just going back to the original question, 162.645. Now two significant figures, if we're looking at significant figures, we start counting from the first non-zero digit, okay? So this is my first significant figure. This here is my second significant figure. And I look at the place value of it and it's in the tens column. So this tells me that I need to round 162.645 to the nearest 10, okay? And because that's a 2, 162 would have round to 160. Make sure you remember the full number, okay? It's not just 16. For the next question, we've got round 0 0.0537, first of all, to two significant figures. Now, I'm rewriting this question. Two significant figures, I need to start counting for my first non-zero digit, okay? So these are place value holders, so these aren't significant figures. So five is my first, three is my second. So essentially I'm rounding to three decimal places. So I look at the three, okay, and I want to know is this gonna stay the same or is it going to change to a four? Because that's a seven, that tells me that this three needs to round up. Um, up. So 0 0.054. For this one, three decimal places, and here I do just count the digits after the decimal point. So I've got one, two, three. So again, I'm looking at the three and I want to know, is that going to stay the same? Is it going to increase to a four? It rounds to 0 0.054, okay? And finally, the last one at the bottom of the page there, round 84,472 to three significant figures. One, two, three digits, okay? So that is in, the place value of that is hundreds. Okay, so that means I need to round to the nearest hundred. Okay, don't forget about these digits or these before it. So I look at that four, is that going to stay the same or increase to a five? Because this is a seven, that means that four will go up. So it's eight, four, five, zero, zero, 84,500. And that's it for rounding and estimating. Okay, so the next thing we're looking at now is lowest common multiple and highest common factor questions. Um, so I look at this one here and straight away it's already screaming out at me because I've got three different figures and I'm being asked when, it, when are they next going to flash at the same time. So I've got every three seconds, every eight seconds and every 11 seconds. Um, so the first one, the red light, it flashes after three. So the next time it will flash is six seconds, then nine seconds, 12 seconds, and so on. And with the yellow, that's going to be after eight seconds, then after 16, after 24, after 32, and so on. So every eight seconds. And for my green light, after 11 seconds, after 22, after 33, after 44, and so on. Now you will always find a lowest common multiple, okay? And for this one, um, they'll keep going for some time, Okay, so we've got 24, 48, 72, 96. This is a really lovely question. I'm going to thank Mrs. Stirk when I see her later. Um, bear with me. 24, 48, 72, 96, 120, 144. <laughs> we've got a good question already. 100 and... Um, 
I've lost where I am now, 168. Keep going, keep 192. It's into 172. Right, um, and we keep going until we get our lowest common multiple. Right, and we'll come back to that in a moment. <laughs> then it says find the highest common factor of 32, 48, and 72. Okay, so 32, hi, uh, I'm going to list my factors of 32, and I'm going to do this systematically. So we've got 1 and 32, 2 and 16, 4 and 8. For 48, I'm going to list my factors. They are 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, 6 and 8. Okay? For 72... I'm going to list my factors, so I've got 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24, 4 and 18, 5 doesn't go into 72, 6 and 12, 7 doesn't go into 72, 8 and 9, and then my next one will be 9 and 8. So I know I've listed them all, and it's really important that if you're using this method, you do list all factors. Okay, I'm then going to list them out, so 32... I've got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 30, 48. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 24, and 48. And for 72, I'm going to have to write a bit smaller. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, and 72. Okay, and then I'm looking for my highest common factor there. I can see that 8 is in all three lists, okay? So it's common because it's in all three lists. Um, four is, but eight is the highest value that appears. So eight is the highest common factor. So this one, if I'd have continued all of these, I'd have got 264, okay? So 264 seconds is the next time they will all flash again. Always, you will always find a lowest common multiple, so just keep them going, okay? Next one we're looking at is product of primes. This is usually quite well answered by students. Um, if ever you get this question, think about this, your prime numbers, okay? So your prime numbers are only divisible by one and, and itself, but it has exactly two factors, okay? So the number one isn't a prime number because you can only do one multiplied by one. So that's only got one factor. So prime numbers, I'm just gonna list a couple here, two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, um, and they continue upwards. So write 504 as a product of its prime. So I'm going to write 504, and I'm going to use prime factor decomposition, or the tree, okay? So this is an even number, so I know I can divide it by 2, okay? So 2 multiplied by 252 gives me 504. And I'm going to circle that 2 because it's a prime number. That means I completely leave it alone. 252, again, it's even, um, so I know I can divide it by 2. And if I have 252, I get 126. So I'm going to circle 2 because it's prime. 126, again, it's even, so I'm going to halve it. So that gives me 2 multiplied by 63. 63, a pair of numbers that multiply that to give 63, 7 and 9. Okay, and 7 is a prime number. Then if I take the number 9... 3 multiplied by 3 gives me 9, okay? And they're both primes, so I circle them. Don't leave it at this point, okay? It asks for a product of primes, and that means that what we need to do is write our final answer as a product, and that means that we multiply them together, okay? Now, I'm just writing them in order. It wouldn't make a difference. If it said use index, you also need to make sure that you'd written it as fully simplified as possible. And I'm just going to check this, so 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, multiplied by 2 is 8, multiplied by 3 is 24, multiplied by 3 is 72, multiplied by 7 gives me 504, so I know that's correct. Okay. If we're looking now in disease, by by this is a, okay, don't get a plus a plus a, all right? That's 1a, add 1a, add 1a, and we'd be collecting.
putting our A's together, which would give three A. That is a common error. Just make sure you keep out, keep a lookout for that. Here we've got three B to the power of four multiplied by five B cubed. Okay, so three multiplied by five is fifteen. And if we put our decimal point there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight point five six multiplied by ten to the power of eight. This next question here, we've got 4.31 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3. Okay, and if I work that out, it's going to be 0 0.00431. All right, remember that if it's to the negative, uh, that is a very, we're getting smaller. Okay, so we're going to get a smaller answer. All right, and then we'll go on to everybody's favourite, which is fractions. All right, and we're just going to do four operations with fractions. So we've got 7 elevenths minus 2 elevenths. We've got the same um, denominator. So I don't need to do anything with the denominators. It's going to be over 11. And 7 subtract 2 is 5. Here we've got 1 and 3 fifths plus 2 and 1 quarter. I'm going to convert these two improper fractions first of all. Okay, and if you're not sure, I'll just do this one as an example. Okay, so... I've got a whole that's been split into fifths, and then I've got another here. So I've got five fifths all together there, and I've got another one, two, three fifths there. So in total, one and three fifths is equivalent to eight fifths. Two and one quarter, okay, so if I've got two holes that have been split into quarters, I've got four quarters in the first, four quarters in the second, and then I've got an extra quarter, Altogether, I've got nine quarters. So I've got eight fifths plus nine quarters. Now, what I need is a common denominator here, all right? And the lowest common multiple of five and four is 20. You don't have to use the lowest common multiple, but if you don't use it, then you will definitely have to simplify your answer later on, okay? So I'm going to make both of my denominators 20. And I look here and I need equivalent, I need an equivalent fraction. So whatever I do to this denominator, okay, I'm going to multiply that by 4. I must do the same to the numerator to ensure it's equivalent. Okay, and here to 5, 9 multiplied by 5 is 45. Now when I add those two together, I get 77 over 20. I want full marks, obviously you do too. So I'm going to convert it back into a mixed number and I look at this and this means 77 divided by 20 as well. How many 20s go into 77? Well, that's three. And then I'm going to have 17 left over. So I've got 17 twentieths left. Here, if we go and look at a dividing fraction, um, some of you might know a trick, and that's fine if you know how to do it. I'm going to look at getting the denominators the same. So one four fifths is equivalent to nine fifths. And I'm dividing by three quarters. Okay. I've really thought about these questions because we're going to have the same denominator of 20 again. All right, and because I've multiplied that by 4, I multiply my numerator by 4, which is 36. And because I've multiplied that by 5, I multiply my numerator by 5, which is 15. Okay, now if I was calculating this, 20 divided by 20 is 1. Now, if I write anything over 1, for example, 3 over 1, that is just 3. Okay, so I don't need to write it as over 1. So I'm going to look at this here, 36 divided by 15. And I can write that as 36 over 15. Now I'm going to convert this into a mixed number because 15 goes into 36 twice and we've got 6 remainder. And I'm going to make sure that even this fraction I've simplified as far as possible. So they're both divisible by 3. So I've got 2 and 2 fifths. Okay, and that's my answer in its lowest form. Finally, to finish off, we've got 2 and a half multiplied by 1 and 3 fifths. 2 and a half is equivalent to 5 over 2, and 1 and 3 fifths is equivalent to 8 over 5. And with this, 5 multiplied by 8 is 40, 5 is 10, and then I'm going to convert this or simplify as, possible, as far as possible, 40 divided by 10, that is just 4. Okay, so that is calculations with fractions, and we're just going to have a look at where you might be giving more of a problem with that. Organised a wedding. Guests had to choose their meal from pasta, chicken or beef. 
one third of the guests chose pasta, five twelfths of the guests chose chicken, and 24 of the guests chose beef, okay? So I've been given the value for beef, but I don't know what these numbers are, okay? So I don't know how many guests these are, but I have got fractions. Now, if I add these together, so one third plus five twelfths, okay? I'm gonna get the same denominator. Now, the lowest common multiple here is 12. Okay, so that I can leave as 5 twelfths. If I multiply this by 4, I can get 4 twelfths. So that is 9 twelfths. So guess who chose pasta or chicken were 9 twelfths, which means that the rest of them chose beef. Okay, so that must be 3 twelfths. So 3 twelfths of the guests chose beef. And that is 24 of the guests. So 3 twelfths represent 24 guests. Okay, now I'm going to use a bar model here just to make sure that I don't make any errors. So 24 is represented across uh, in, within here somewhere. Now I've got 3 twelfths of this is 24 guests. So I know that 1 twelfth I can work out by doing 24, which is 8. So each part of this is 8. And if I fill this in, I've got now 12 parts, which are each worth 8. So 12 multiplied by 8 is 96. So in total, there are 96 guests. Everybody wanted to wish them well. Okay. Next question, reverse percentages. So in a sale, the original price of a bag was reduced by one fifth. And the sale price of the bag is £29.40. So it's about recognising that this isn't the full value, this is the sale price. Now, the bag in total uh, is going to be five-fifths minus one-fifth, okay? Now, just to go through that a bit, okay, it's been split into five parts because it's been reduced by a fifth. So I've drawn a bar model here with five parts to it. If it's been reduced by one, that means I've not got this bit here. So it's actually now only worth four-fifths of what the original cost was, which was £29.40. Okay, so now what I need to do to work out what one part is, is calculate £29.40 divided by four. Okay, so fours into two, they don't go, so I'm going to carry that two over. Fours into 29 goes seven times, and I'm going to carry over one. 4s into 14 go 3 times and I carry over 2 and 4s into 20 go 5, okay? So I know that each of these parts are worth £7.35. And also that tells me that this final part is worth £7.35, okay? So if I take, I know that this is worth £29.40 and if I add the 7 35 on, I can get the total cost, okay, which was £36.75, okay, so there we go. If you've got any questions, please let Mr Russell know because he's standing there not doing a great deal. Also, just to let you know, I've got tickets for Wembley on Saturday, that's tickets for Wembley to go and see Aston Villa. Maybe you'll get there again one day, Barnsley fans. All right, so ratios. Right, 40 to 2,000 as a ratio in its simplest form, okay? So we want it to be as low as possible. It's a very similar technique to um, simplifying fractions, okay? So 40 and 2,000, these both end in zero. So they are both divisible by 10, okay? Um, as in 10 is a factor. So if I divide both sides by 10, I get 4 to 200, okay? Now, straight away, I can see these are both even. So I could divide by two, so two to 100. But again, this is, these are still, these still have a common factor. So two divided by two is one, and 100 divided by two is 50, okay? So we've got one to 50. Next question, two people share 350 pounds in the ratio one to six, calculate each share. So again, I've drawn a bar model here to represent the one part and the six parts. The bar models are really helpful um, when you're trying to interpret what the question is asking. So because we're just sharing 350 in the ratio 1 to 6, um, I know that these parts altogether are worth £350. 
Now there's one plus six, there's seven parts all together. So I'm gonna do 350 divided by seven. So each part is worth 50 pounds, okay? So if I'm sharing it in the ratio one six, I know that the one part is worth 50 and the six parts are worth three, uh, 300 pounds, okay? Six multiplied by 50 is 300. Next question, there are only black pens and green pens in a box. These maths questions are really um, to inspire you, aren't they? The ratio of the number of black pens in the box to the number of green pens in the box is two to five. What fraction of their pens are black? Okay, so the order matters here. So we've got black to green is two to five. So total parts, I've written seven. So total parts, seven. Okay, and we want to know what fraction are black. So we've got two parts out of seven that are black. Final question here on ratios. Okay, so we've got Frank, Mary and Seth shared some sweets in the ratio four to five to seven. Seth, Seth got 18 more sweets than Frank. Okay, so we're only looking here at Seth and Frank. So Frank was the first value, so Frank was four. And Seth was the last value, so Seth was seven. Okay, so here I've just drawn Frank and Seth. But here it says Seth got 18 more sweets than Frank. So I'm looking at this, it's not all of them that are worth 18. It's not that one, one of these are worth 18, it's that the difference between them is 18 sweets. Okay, and as we can see, the difference between the number of parts is three. Okay, so three parts are equivalent to 18 sweets. Okay, so three parts are equivalent to 18 sweets. So if we do 18 divided by three, each part is worth six. Okay, so it said work out the total number of sweets they shared. So if each part is worth six and Frank got four, he got 24 in total. If Mary got five parts, each part's worth six, she got 30. And Seth, he got seven parts. So this is a recipe question um, and it's given us the ingredients for 16 mince pies. Okay, and Elaine wants to make 72. Okay, so... Seventy-two divided by sixteen. So sixteen, thirty-two, forty-eight, sixty-four. Okay, so it's four, and then I've got a remainder of eight. Now it's eight out of sixteen, which is a half, so four point five. Now another way that I was talking to my class earlier about solving these questions is I know that for sixteen how much I need. So if I need another 16, and another 16, and another 16, okay, so that makes 64. So then if I need eight more, I know I need to halve it. So for 240 grams of butter, I know I need four lots of the 240, plus I need half of that, which is 120. Okay, so 480, 960, 1080. So I need 1,080 grams of butter. For flour, 350 four times gives me 1,400. Plus another 175 gives me 1,575. 100 grams of sugar, so 100, 100, 100, 150. So that's 450. And 280 grams of minced meat, just lovely. So 280 four times. Plus another 140 gives me 1,260, okay? Take your time with that. Do it whichever way um, suits you. So you could use a multiplier, okay, your double number line, or you could just set it out really um, clearly. Right, next up, sequences and nth term, okay? So sequences and nth term. So this first question says, here are the first four terms of an arithmetic sequence, okay? And that means that it's increasing by the same amount each time. So I'm going to look at this. So I've got 6, 10, 14, and 18. And that's increasing by four each time, okay? Now that's really important because that tells me it's something to do with the four multiplication table, or 4n. 
So if I write out the fourth multiplication table above, 4, 8, 12, 16, and I look, how do I get to the sequence? So to get from the four multiplication table to the sequence, I have to add two. So my answer is 4n plus two. Now it says um, in the next part, it says the nth term of a different sequence is 3n plus five. And it asks, is 108 a term of this sequence? Show how you get your answer. Now you could, if you wanted, just try and write out all of the sequence. So you could do three multiplied by one plus five, or well, three multiplied by one is uh, three, add five is eight. Three multiplied by two is six, add five is 11, and you know it's gonna go up by three each time. So you could go doing that for ages, or we can make it into an equation. So if 108 is in the sequence, okay, when I substitute a number into there, it will give me 108. So the way that we check whether it's in the sequence is to form an equation. So now I'm going to try and solve this. So I'm going to minus 5 from both sides. So I get 3n is 103. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to work out what n equals. So 103 divided by 3 divides into 10 3 times with 1 left over. Divides into 13 um, 4 times. And so it's going to be 34 and a We've got a remainder one there, and three was our divider. So n equals 34.3 recurring. So that means, because it's not, that means it's not an, uh, a term in the sequence. It, li it lies between the 34th term, which would be 102, and the 35th term, which would be 105. Okay, so 103 lies between those two terms. Next up, factorising and expanding, okay? Actually, expanding is something that we found people, oh, all right, so factorising, though, is when we're putting the brackets back in, okay, and we're finding the highest common factor. So factorise 3f plus 9, so I'm looking for a common factor of 3f and 9, and the highest one I can find is 3. So 3 is going to go on the outside of the brackets, and I think 3 multiplied by what gives me 3f, that's going to be f, and 3 multiplied by what will give me 9, and that's 3, okay? Now I'm going to check it by expanding it out. So 3 multiplied by f is 3f. Three, 3 multiplied by 3 is 9, okay? So it's a nice question because you can check that you've done it correctly. This, um, I'm going to just move on to this one, and I'm going to go back to that one afterwards, okay? Because this says factorise fully. Now, that word fully is given a hint, okay, that there's more than one part to factorise or... Uh, one term, I can't get my words out. Okay, so I'm looking at this, I've got 9a squared minus 6a, and I'm looking, and the highest common factor of 9 and 6 is 3. Okay, but I've also got a squared and a. Okay, so I've got an a in both terms, so actually that can be factorised out as well. So then I'm going to put my bracket in, and I think 3a multiplied by what will give me 9a squared. Well, if we take it a step at a time, 3 multiplied by what gives 9, that's 3. A multiplied by what gives A squared, and that's an A, okay? Then we've got 3A multiplied by what gives minus 6A, okay? Well, 3 multiplied by minus 2 will give um, minus 6, and we've got the A there already, okay? So I'm going to put my bracket back in. I check it by expanding it out. Also, just look for any common factors inside the brackets, because if there's still something common there, you've not found the highest common factor. So I'm going to go back to this one. Okay, and we've got x squared minus 2x minus 15. Now, I've not got a common factor in these three terms, okay? Other than one, nothing else divides into a, or three parts. So that's a hint to me that I need to use two brackets, okay? Now, to get x squared, it's x multiplied by x. And I need two numbers that multiply to give me negative 15, and add together to give me negative two, okay? So the coefficient of x. Um, now, this gives me a real hint. If I need two numbers that multiply to give me negative 15, that tells me about my signs. And one's got to be positive and one's got to be negative. So then I'm just going to uh, list down all the factors that can multiply to give me negative 15. So minus one multiplied by 15. It could be the other way around and one and negative 15. It could be minus three and five or it could be three and negative five, okay? Now I'm looking for a pair which add together to give me negative two, okay? So the sum is negative two. So minus one add 15 is 14, 
One take away 15 is minus 14. Minus 3 add 5 is 2, but that's positive. 3 subtract 5 is negative 2. So I know that it's positive 3 and minus 5. Okay, so a similar question to that down here, but it actually says solve. Okay, now this is with the factorising section because we need to factorise in order to solve it. Okay, so again, I'm going to use two brackets because there's no common um, term. Okay, and it's going to equal zero this time. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me positive 20 and which add together to give me negative 12. Okay, again, because this sign is a positive, this tells me that either both signs are going to be negative because a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive or both are positive. Because this is negative, I know that both signs are negative. Okay, so I've got X minus in both there. All right, so my factors of 20 are 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. Okay, so the ones that sum to give me 12 are 2 and 10. So minus 2 and minus 10. And this equals 0. So I either need this bracket to be 0 or I need this bracket to be 0. All right, so something subtract 2 is 0, so x is going to equal 2. Or something, subtract 10 is 0, so x will equal 10. Next one, expand and simplify. Okay, so I'm going to go for this one first. I'm going to expand these brackets. So 7 multiplied by 2g is 14g. And 7 multiplied by 3 is 21. Negative 5 multiplied by g is negative 5g. And negative 5 multiplied by 2 is negative 10. Okay, now what we need to do is make sure we collect our terms carefully. So we've got 14g, subtract 5g. Okay, remember to circle the, the sign in front because that belongs to it. So 14g minus 5g is 9g. And we've got 21, subtract 10, which is 11. Okay, and then if I go back to this one, all right, and this, you might have heard of it as the FOIL method, because there's no sign in between, that means we're multiplying it all together. So that means that I've got to multiply x by everything in this second bracket. So x multiplied by x is x squared. x multiplied by negative 1 is negative 1x, or you can just put negative x. Because I've multiplied x by everything in the second bracket, I now have to do the same with 3. So 3 multiplied by x is 3x. And 3 multiplied by negative 1 is minus 3. Then I'm going to collect my like terms. Now, x squared and x are not like terms, okay? So x squared will remain as it is. Then I've got minus 1, add 3x, which is 2x, and that's positive, so that's why there's a plus there. Subtract 3, negative 3. Okay? So that's factorising and expanding, and we're now going to look at some solving equations. Right, so Kieran, Jermaine and Chris play football. Kieran has, eight, uh, has scored eight more goals than Chris. Jermaine has scored five more goals than Kieran. And altogether, they've scored 72. Sounds a bit like Villa. All right, so we've got Chris, we've got Kieran, and we've got Jermaine. Mr Starkey, did you know that I've got a Wembley ticket? Just Wembley? to mention, Wembley? yeah. Wembley, where is that? <laughs> oh, sorry, you're a Barnsley fan, aren't you? Yeah, you wouldn't know about that. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Chris, Kieran and Jermaine, okay? Kieran has scored eight more goals than Chris, okay? Now, if, say, I'd scored four and uh, Mr Russell had scored eight more than me, that would never happen. He would have scored 12. And to get that, I've added eight, okay? So however many Chris has got, Kieran, we need to add eight on. Now, the thing that people always forget is that we need to write an expression for Chris. So Chris, we're going to call X, Kieran, 8 more, so he is x plus 8, okay? You can't just write plus 8 either. And then it says Jermaine has scored 5 more goals than Kieran. So if Kieran's x plus 8, Jermaine is x plus 8 plus another 5, which is x plus 13, okay? So then it says altogether they've scored 72 goals. So the, these three scored 72. So when I add the numbers that they've each scored together... Kieran scored 17 plus 8, okay, so he scored 25. And then Jermaine has scored 17 plus 13, okay, which is 30, 
okay? And I'm just gonna add those up to check them. So 25 add 30 is 55, add 17 is 72. So I know that I've got that correct. Next one here is a solving, okay? Now actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that into an inequality sign, okay? Because it's exactly the same skill, all right? I just want you to see it with this um, so that you know that it's no different in terms of what you need to do. So this is saying four lots of x plus five is less than 15. Okay, so even if it's an inequality sign, you still do exactly the same thing. We still want to solve to find the value of x. Okay, so I'm going to expand these brackets. So four multiplied by x is four x. Four multiplied by five is 20. Okay, so four x plus 20 is less than 15. Okay, now to continue this, I need to get, I need to isolate x, get x on its own. Okay, so um, plus 20, I want to get that to zero, so I'm minus 20, which means that I need to keep this balance, so I'm minus 20 from that side also. So I've got 4x is less than, and 15 subtract 20 is negative 5. Okay, now to get x on its own, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Okay, now you are more than welcome in your exam to leave it as a fraction, okay? You are absolutely fine because the exam uh, mark scheme will say OE and that means or equivalent. Okay, you could also work that out as minus 1.25. Okay, so X is less than minus 1.25. Here we've got another one. It says the perimeter of the triangle is the same length as the perimeter of the square. Find an expression. Okay, so this is an expression. You're not being asked to solve anything. You're not being asked to work out X. Okay, for the length of one side of the square in terms of A. Okay, now we're talking about perimeter and we know these two are equal to each other. To find the perimeter of a shape, I add um, the lengths. So 4a minus 1 plus a plus 2 plus 3a plus 3. Okay, now if I collect these like terms, 4a add a add 3a is 8a. Minus 1 add 2 is 1, add 3 is 4. So the perimeter of this triangle is 8a plus 4. And it says is the same as the perimeter of the square. So the square is also 8a plus 4. Okay, so that's the perimeter of it. Now, if I want to know what... Okay, right, changing the subject. Right, one on its own. Now, it's being multiplied by 4 and then subtract p. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get this to 0. So I'm going to add p to both sides. So 4R equals Q plus P. I want to get R on its own. Okay, at the moment it's been multiplied by 4, so I want a single R. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So R equals Q plus P over 4. Right. So next one, really quickly, all right, because it looks like I'm talking for too long. So general form for a straight line. Okay, y equals mx plus c. All right, this is just something that my class was saying earlier. So um, gradient is the m. And c, okay, make sure that this sign belongs to it as well. Okay, this is the y-intercept. Okay, so that means where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, so here we've got the equation y equals 2x plus 3. So the coefficient of x is the gradient. So the gradient is 2, so for every one square you go across, you go up 2, as long as the scales are the same. And the y-intercept is positive 3. All right? And if it wanted the coordinate, that would be 0, 3. All right? Here, the equation, right, remember, if it's got nothing in front of the x, that means there's a 1 there. Okay, so the gradient is 1, and the y-intercept, well, it crosses over at negative 4, and if you wanted the coordinates, 0, minus 4. Here a half x, so the gradient is a half, or it's 0 0.5. And the y-intercept, well, there's nothing there, so that means plus 0 or minus 0 even. Okay, so that's at the origin, so origin. So it's at 0, 0. And then this one here. Now, this one uh, it looks slightly different. We've got 2y equals 4x plus 10. We always want it in the form y equals mx plus c. OK, so if it was something different, you'd need to rearrange it so that you get y there isolated on its own. Because I've got 2y, I'm going to divide everything by 2. All right, so uh, to get that on its own, I'm going to have y equals 2x 
plus 5. I've just written actually over the answer box. I've just drifted off then. So gradient is 2 and the y-intercept is 5 or the coordinate would be 0, 0, 5. Okay, so now we're just going to move on to a couple of different bits. One of those being frequency polygons. All right, so looking at a bit of data. So the table gives information about the distances thrown in metres at a school sports day. All right, it can be really confusing to think about mean, median, um, cumulative frequency and other things if you're doing the higher. So when it's a frequency polygon, don't overcomplicate this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the midpoint and we're going to plot the frequency. Now polygons, it would, I always think of poly, poly means many and gons means sides, okay? So it's gonna have many sides. So the midpoint of zero and two is one, and the frequency is five, so I plot that. Here, between two and four, the midpoint is three, and the frequency is 10, plot that here. So we've got five, seven, and nine. Okay, so five, 21. Okay, just take care of the scale, because this, we've got 10 squares, for five, so um, five divided by 10 each squares with 0.5. Seven, it's 18. So seven, we should have done this earlier. And nine and one, okay, so nine and one. Then what you do is you use a ruler. Obviously you don't take your phone into the exam because that's bad. But make sure you do use a ruler. And, and you actually, you go through the points as well, okay? You actually try and go through the points, not like mine, but that is the frequency polygon. Tree diagram, okay? So a tree di diagram, so Andy sometimes get a lift to and from college. When he does not get a lift, he walks. So the probability that he gets a lift to college is 0 0.4. Now probability, super important, probability adds up to one, okay? So if the probability is 0 0.4, the probability, um, that he doesn't get a lift and therefore he walks will be 0 0.6. Now, each of these branches will always add up to one, okay? So this here, it's going to add up to one. So even without reading it, I could fill it in, but I'm going to read it. So the probability that he walks home from college is 0 0.7, okay? So walk home is 0 0.7, so that must be 0 0.3 because it's got to sum to one. Now, again, this is gonna be the same as this because, um, it's not conditional, okay? And because it's not giving us any more information and it's again, Andy gets a lift home and he walks home from college. Okay, so I've completed the tree diagram. That would get me two marks. Then it says, calculate the probability that Andy gets a lift to college and walks home from school, okay? So first of all, he's getting a lift to college and then he walks home, okay? From college, not from school, okay? So we've got the probability there is 0 0.4. And the probability here is 0 0.7, okay? And when we're calculating probability and we're using and, so he lifts to college and walks home, we multiply, okay? Because we're saying one thing and another thing. And when we multiply those together, we get 0 0.28. Okay, the next one, it says calculate the probability and he does not get a lift to or from college. Okay, so that means he has to walk to college and he has to walk home from college. All right, so that's 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.7, which is 0 0.42, okay? Now, remember when you're doing these, okay, you might sometimes then have to add some of these probabilities together depending on what the question's required. Venn diagrams, okay, Venn diagrams. So 50 students were asked in a survey whether they use text or social media. 20 students said they use only text. Now, this full circle represents text. But because it said only text, that means it can't go here. It's just going there. Eight students said they, use, they only use social media. 17 students said they use both text and social media. Okay. Put this information into the Venn diagram. So we've got 20, add 17 is 37, then we've got another eight, so 37 plus eight is 45, okay? Now, 50 students were asked, so we're going to have five out here as well. Then it says, how many of the students who surveyed do not use text or social media? So that is five. Then it says, one of the students in the survey is chosen at random. What is the probability that the student uses texts? 
okay? Now, texts is this full circle, as I said, okay? So, uses text can include this bit as well. So, we've got 20 add 17, which is 37. So, there's 37, in to uh, 37 who use texts, and there's 50 students in total. So, make sure when it asks for a probability, you give a probability. How much time have I got? Five minutes. Right, okay. So, next one. So, we're given ABE and CBD are our straight lines. So, show that ABC is an isosceles triangle. So, ABC. So, it's this triangle here. We need to show that it is tri uh, isosceles. It says, give a reason for each stage of your working. You guys can be so, so good at calculating the missing angles, but the one thing that we do notice is that you're not giving reasons. This new spec exam, it gives two marks on a question like this just for the reasons. And if you don't show every single step, you will not get both marks for that part. So the first one that I'm gonna, the first bit I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label this angle here on the diagram as 80 degrees. And every time I do something, I'm gonna write my reasoning. So this one, vertically opposite angles are equal. Okay, so vertically opposite angles are equal. Okay, so we've got that this is 80 degrees. Okay, so now to work out this angle, I know that angles in a triangle have to sum to 180. So before I do anything, okay, I'm writing that angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. Okay, so 50 plus 80 is 130. So 180 subtract 130 is 50 degrees. Okay, so that angle there is 50 degrees. So I've shown it's an isosceles triangle. Okay, so base angles are the same. Okay, so those two. So therefore the triangle is isosceles. All right. Here we've got another question. So the diagram shows a regular octagon and a regular hexagon. All right. Now, I always tell my class, all right, there's plenty of methods to do with this, okay? Especially exterior angles sum to 360. Okay? So you can always use that no matter how many sides, okay? We can always work out that the exterior angle, okay, what the size is. Um, Another method, if you completely forget that, is just count up in 180. So always start at the triangle, and if you can count up in 180, you can work out the sum of the interior angles. So first of all, I can use this, 360 divided by 6. So that's telling me that every exterior angle on this one is 60 degrees. So I know that's 45, so I know that's 135, so I know that's 135. All right, and I could have also worked out exterior here. 135 at 120, angle 55, and angles at a point sum to 360, so 360 minus 255 is 105 degrees. Okay, you could have used the exterior angles, you could have also used that that was 1080 divided by 8 to find 135, this was 720 divided by 6 to find 120. Okay. Um, and then last one that I'm going to do um, is a similar shape question. Similar shapes. All right. So here, do not get tempted to draw a triangle out and then a trapezium. Okay. So this here is one triangle. And that's 10. And that's F. And it's parallel to that, which is a larger triangle altogether, which is 15. And I don't know what this full length is. I know that that is three, but I don't know what the full length is. So I'm going to put a question mark there for now. All right. Um, so I can work out what this length is because I can do 15 divided by 10. All right. Or I can see triangle A and triangle B. If that's 10 and that's 15, I multiply by 1.5. Okay. Now, um, I've not actually read the, the question. So it says the triangle is enlarged. The smallest, <laughs> the smallest angle of the triangle is 25 degrees. 
the triangle is enlarged by scale factor three. Ben says the smallest angle of the enlarged triangle is 75 degrees because 25 multiplied by three is 75. Okay, so I didn't actually need to do any of that here for this question, all right? Um, 25 multiplied by three is 75. Well, angles in a triangle, if that was 25, and I've mul I can't multiply it by three because no matter what the size of the triangle is, they always sum to 180 degrees. Okay, they'll always sum to 180 degrees. Um, so I'm going to stop there, all right, because I feel that you've probably had enough of my voice. I'm going to leave um, these formulae just there for you to have a, a little peruse over for the next few um, couple of minutes, is it going to be? Or um, straight away? We'll stop that video and switch on to the higher video. Okay, so we'll literally, we'll be, we'll be back in two minutes. Everything's going to be uploaded so you can watch it uh, through the night as well. But you do need some rest before the exam in the morning. Yeah, so what Russell said. Um, so um, simultaneous equations is going to come up in uh, higher and there is going to be some other bits of crossover as well. Is that right, Sanders? Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, we've got I'm talking to my people. Why equals mx plus c? Why equals mx plus c? We've got some thirds. Uh, we've got some solving inequalities. We've got some fractions again. Yep, and term indices, uh, and we'll supply some more as well. Yeah, okay, so... so